What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I perform due diligence on a stock or on a company before I make an investment. Basically, how do I evaluate it and what am I looking for? In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know. Let's go. Okay, so the reason I am making this video is because I was asked to make it from somebody in my Discord chat. They said, hey Zach, would you be able to do a video on how to perform due diligence on a company and what should be included? It'd be really helpful thank you so yes no problem I'm gonna make that video right now and if you guys are interested in joining the discord chat that's where I'm trying to build a community of traders to share their trade ideas share their due diligence and share their resources so that everybody can make a little bit more money I also post all of my technical analysis and a weekly watch list in there if you're interested in access to that it is five dollars per month and there's a link in the description down below now what is due diligence so this is my definition of due diligence for me it is gathering and understanding enough information to make an informed decision about the company. So it doesn't matter if you just pull a bunch of information, you need to be able to interpret it and understand it to the point that if something changes in the environment around your company or your stock, you should be able to know how that's going to affect your stock. That's what I mean by understanding the information. If you understand what industry and what your business model is, you should be able to understand what impact a certain event in regulation or a competitor coming out with a new product might have on your business. Business. Now, the way that I gather that information is by asking myself five different questions. Number one is, does this fit into my portfolio? So I'm not going to go out and perform a bunch of due diligence on a company and research it. If I don't need any more stocks in my portfolio, maybe I'm looking for bonds or I'm looking for dividend paying companies or REITs or something like that, something that's going to give me some fixed income. If I don't need more stocks in my portfolio, don't waste your time doing due diligence on anything that doesn't fit in with your portfolio and your investment goals because you're just wasting your time. Secondly, is it in a good industry you need to ask yourself this because if you're completely against tobacco then don't spend any of your time in that industry if you're completely against a specific industry then, then don't waste your time doing due diligence on anything that has exposure to that industry for instance i don't invest in oil and gas because i don't think that industry is going to grow significantly over the future i do think renewables and electrification and alternative power is going to grow exponentially into the future so instead of investing in oil and gas i'm focused on different other areas so you need to make sure is this a stock is this company in an industry that actually fits in with your portfolio and third thing is do they have a good business model you need to understand how they make money do they pull oil out of the ground and sell it at the market how do they get it to market what's the transition like what are those things that they need and then is that a good business model compared to for instance google who owns YouTube and they run an ad before every video that you see. It costs them absolutely nothing. There's no manpower and it's like 100% gross profit. And then they just pay a little bit back to the creators like myself. Which business model would you prefer? Because I can tell you the Google one's a lot easier to scale up. So you need to understand the business model behind the company once you've already established that it fits in with your portfolio and it's in a good industry. Now, those are the three easy questions. Those are the questions that you should be able to answer within a couple of minutes of, of looking at the company and understanding how they make money. And then is it a good industry to be in? You can do a quick little Google search to find an industry trend. And then you, does it fit into your portfolio? That's just based on what you need. So those first three questions should be extremely easy to ask yourself and to answer relatively easily. Now, the last two questions are the ones that are a little bit more difficult and they take a little bit more research. And so number four is how have they done so far? Have they executed? Executed on their business plan what's the stock price at right now and what has it been at in the past what do the financials look like and we're going to dive into this real quick and then number five is what are the risks behind this investment so let's dive into this one real quick how have they done so far so in order to figure this out, I use a variety of different resources and, and I'm going to go through them here in this in this slide. So number one is the stock chart and I use either Quest Trade or StockCharts.com to take a look at the technical analysis and how the actual stock itself is doing. And so I use Quest Trade if you're interested in that. That's the broker that I use every single day. There's a link down below that will also give you $50 in free commissions when you sign up. So if you're looking for a new broker, definitely check out Quest Trade. That's the broker that I use in all of my videos here. Now, now, that's what I use to look at the stock chart. Secondly is the financials. Now, to find the financials, what you want to do is go to either the company website or go to cdar.com. I'm going to walk through cdar.com because that's where all the company filings and news releases and everything can be found. I'm going to do a full walkthrough on that in just one minute. But sometimes you can also find the financials on the company website. I do not recommend going to Yahoo Finance because sometimes 
Uh, it's not always accurate. Sometimes the currency changes things and sometimes they categorize certain items a little bit differently. So I always recommend either going to CDAR or going to the company website instead of Yahoo Finance or any of the others. Try and pull the financials at least from as direct a source as possible. Third thing that I like to look at is the press releases. This is basically going to tell you all the major announcements that a company has. And if you go to CDAR.com or the US equivalent is Edgar.com, you can see all of the recent press releases. The companies will almost always share these press releases on their website as well however they are not required to so if a company has a press release that they don't really want to get out there or insiders are selling shares or there's bad news on a result sometimes those press releases will not be posted to the company website so it can be much more advantageous to go to cdar.com because you'll be able to see absolutely everything now next one on here is management interviews and the place that i like to go for this is usually youtube because nowadays almost every interview gets posted to youtube but cnbc also seems to continue conduct the most amount of interviews. So I usually check their website as well. And if you can't find it there, you just type in management name and then type an in interview after that into Google and you can usually find something really, really easily. But YouTube is usually the number one place that I start with. And then the investor presentation is always going to be found on the company website. Sometimes you can download it directly from the website. Sometimes you need to send them your info and basically sign up for an email. But I think almost all of the time, except for once, it has been available immediately where you just submit an email and then you get it right away. There was one time I had to email in to get the investor deck, but you can do it. It's totally available. It's not difficult to do. You can find an investor presentation, which is basically a PowerPoint slide deck for pretty much every company that you can look at. And they usually update them within at least three months. And so that's the one big thing. And then lastly, the last big thing that I like to look for is actual accomplishments. Now, what I mean by this is not a nice news release or a letter of intent or something kind of cool. What I'm talking about is actual revenue numbers, actual buildings, actual deals closed. I'm looking for things that are actual solid that have a meaningful impact on the business. That is what I am looking for. And that is what I am trying to find when I go through this research and figure out how have they done so far. I'm trying to figure out the major milestones that have had major impacts on this business. And at the same time, at the exact same time, I'm looking for red flags, anything that might concern me, anything that raises big issues for me, anything that might be a conflict of interest or anything where I see a risk to the company. And that's what we're going to talk about next. But first thing I want to do is go through examples of where you can find these documents. So like I said, we're going to walk through cedar.com. I'm going to give you an, a warning here. It's the most old school, terrible website you'll ever see in your life. And hopefully they revamp it at some point. But all you have to do is go to cedar.com. And this is what it looks like. And yes, this is the right website, believe it or not. This is where every Canadian company's public filings are available. Maybe there's a new website and I'm missing it. But I think this is it. And so I click on English and then you get taken to this absolutely terrible home page. And what I usually do is I just go search database. And so if you come here, you can go for searching an investment fund. 99% of the time I'm searching for a company. So you click on the company button and then you're basically left with this little kind of fill out form here. And so if you type in the company name, so let's just type in pure extracts because that's the company that I just talked about on my YouTube channel here. If you leave the document type at all, it'll basically show you all of their documents and you can basically look at the filings. And so I think it goes back probably six months here. And if you type in search, it will basically pull the documents. Now, if you type enter, if you just hit the enter button, it that usually doesn't work for me. So make sure you click type on the search button. And then here we go. You can see all of the filings. So on the left hand side, here's the company name. And then you've got the date of filing. You've got the time that it actually came out on that date. And then you've got the document type here. And it's usually organized in accordance to the document type and so at the beginning here certification of filing so this is basically yeah we totally certify that what we're filing is accurate and then you can go down here and when you scroll down you can go to the news releases and when you click on the news release it'll basically make a pop-up window and it'll tell you exactly what that news release was and so as you can see pure extracts technologies corp has issued news releases two times on February 25th, again on the 16th, the 10th, the 27th, the 26th. I just did a full analysis of this company. So if you want to see it, it is available on my YouTube channel. But this is where you go to see the financial statements, to see the press releases, to see anything that's going on here. You can see right here, interim financial statements. And when you click on this, it'll give you a pop up window and then you can get into it. So it's kind of 
um, a terrible website, but it's a great resource for finding any information that the company has to publicly disclose will be on this website. So it's a great resource for finding a lot of great information. The second website that I use is stockcharts.com. So if I have to use a stock chart website and let's say I just can't get into Questrade or, or I just want to look something up real quick, I usually use stockcharts.com. I do have an account with them, but it does cost money. However, it's probably my favorite free stock charting program when you don't have an account you can just type in um, whatever company you want in here and it, it basically pops up it's a really great resource and then yahoo finance i don't use yahoo finance a whole lot for looking at financial statements but when you compare companies one thing that i really like about yahoo finance is this statistics tab right here what it does is it shows you a lot of key ratios that you're going to want to look at so even if these numbers are just slightly off or the financials are a little bit different it's totally okay because it's probably the same with all the same companies in that industry and this is a great resource for just pulling some quick ratios so if you want to see what the price to sales ratio is for apple it's right here if you want to see what the total debt to equity ratio is it's right here if you want to see what the operating cash flow is it's right here same thing with the dividends there's lots of great information in here so if you're looking for just quick ratios to compare companies i highly recommend yahoo finance and if you're in the u.s or you want to look at a u.s company if you type in edgar i don't know what the right thing is it's sec.gov you got to get to this page here right here edgar filings and then you can type in uh whatever company you want so if it's a u.s company this is where you'll be able to find all of the filings. So this is the exact same thing for as CDAR, but for the US. So this is where I would do all of my basically file. This is where I would pull the financials from the news releases, anything about this company that I want to find. This is going to be the purest, most unedited form that will come directly from the company and it gets hosted here. Okay, now we're back in the PowerPoint. And if you guys are interested in seeing me do an entire walkthrough and actually go through the entire due diligence process and evaluate a company, then leave a comment down below and I will choose one of the companies that you guys list in the comments and I will make another video that walks you through the entire due diligence process and what I actually think as I go through the process I'll basically just verbally spew out what goes through my mind as I look at the financials and do my own due diligence on a company so leave a comment down below now number five the big thing here is what are the risks so once you know what the company has done in the past and and how it's doing and you're okay with that and you're comfortable with it and maybe you like it what you need to think about next is what are the risks and once you get into this company what what is going to negatively affect it or what are the concerns that you might have so number one is going to be management if you invest into a company that has bad management over time those problems and those weaknesses are going to compound and it's not going to be very good for the company so number one thing is management make sure that you have a good solid cfo and make sure that you have a good solid ceo that has vision and has the ability to lead a company and more importantly that ceo should really have experience it's a very difficult position to get into as ceo if you haven't done it before or at least being on the boat with somebody that's done it before being somebody in management where a business has done what they're trying to do before it really helps out when uh when you're the ceo and you've done it before so i i highly recommend that look into the management and watch the interviews and how they answer questions and see whether or not you agree with the answers that they give out secondly is competitors if you invest in apple and samsung releases a new phone that has amazing capabilities that could be a risk to your investment if you are tesla and there's 20 new electric car companies that just popped up and they all have pretty cool products that's a competitor that you might need to have an issue with if you're gm and all of a sudden electric vehicles are taking over that is a substitution to your product that you might want to look into and you need to be well aware of that so so competition and substitutions are two very different things coke and pepsi are competitors but water is a substitution for coke and pepsi and so you need to make sure that you understand those and how they can affect your industry substitutions are usually industry changes such as gas to electric that's an industry change because of a substitution whereas competitors would be the electric companies within the ev market and so those are two different things that you need to consider the next one is regulation if you're getting into the mj space or the alcohol space or anything that is highly regulated you need to be very well aware that those regulations can change at any point and they can have a drastic impact on your business so you need to have maybe safer margins you need to be able to weather the storm you need to
to have a bigger balance sheet. You need to be able to manage any changes in the regulation. Lastly, as the product, let's say that you're a car manufacturing company and you have a major recall on your premier model. Well, that's a huge product risk. You need to be well aware of that. This usually comes down to newer companies that are launching products, but this would be a major concern for somebody in the drone industry. If they have a uh, autonomous flying taxi and they have a taxi that goes down, that's a major project product issue. Same thing with Boeing. So those are the, those are the concerns that you might have. And then the ability to raise more capital. This is probably going to be a resource company. Some of the gold companies that I've talked about in the past, most of them are trying to develop a piece of land, raise a little bit of capital, develop the land a little bit more, raise a little bit more capital, and then extract the gold, expand the mine, raise a little bit more capital. And so a lot of them are very dependent on the ability to raise capital and the ability of management to go to capital markets. So these are some of the risks that you need to consider. And you need to ask yourself, is my company that I'm doing due diligence on and that I'm looking at well positioned to manage the most likely risks on this list? That's what you need to think about. And maybe maybe they're in a position of strength because they're an electric vehicle company with a uh, with a unique strategic advantage. That'd be a great thing. But if you're uh, if you're a vehicle company like Ford and you don't have a ton of EVs going out yet, that might be a concern. So those are the things that you need to consider when you're looking at the risks of a company. Now, if you guys are interested in learning more about these companies, how to understand the financials, look at the stock chart, and find a good entry and exit point, then definitely consider signing up for my stock market fundamentals course. It is complete completely free when you sign up for a two week free trial using the link down below. It's hosted on Skillshare and there's over nine hours of content. There's over 2,800 students that have gone through the course, over 150 reviews, and I promise you, it'll be the best free stock market course that you can find on the internet. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal nine hour course that'll walk you through step by step everything you need to know. And the link is in the description down below if you'd like to give it a shot. Now, I know what you're probably thinking is, okay, Zach, I've gone through all of the due diligence. Now, how do I figure out when when should I actually enter the position? Well, this is the checklist that I go through in order to identify, am I actually going to buy this stock and when am I going to get in? So number one has to fit within my portfolio. Number two, I have to be bullish on the industry. I have to like the industry that the company operates in. And I have to think that there's going to be growth in that industry, at least over the short to medium term. Third thing is I have to understand the business model. I have to actually know what the company does to provide value in the marketplace, bring in revenue, and I have to understand what is going to impact that from the perspective of a competitor or a substitute. Fourth is I have to look at the financials. You have to be able to actually understand the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement so that you can understand how the business operates and where they're spending that money, how much management is taking for salaries, how much they're spending on marketing and advertising, and what their profit margins look like. You need to know all of those things before you actually put your money into a company. Fifth is the stock chart has to present an opportunity. I'm looking for a stock chart that's either breaking out or bouncing off of support. Those are my two main two strategies, and that's usually what I look for in the stock chart. If it doesn't have one of those, I'm going to be looking for a other different strategy that I can identify and that I can find an opportunity. And otherwise, I probably will just wait it out until I can establish a clear direction and present myself with an opportunity that looks good. Once you have that opportunity, take another quick look at management, make sure everything is still solid and that the CEO and the CFO haven't decided to just leave immediately. Those are two major red flags. So make sure everything is good there and then make sure that you understand the plan for the future as well as the risks associated with the company. We went through a big list of some of the risks. So you need to make sure that you understand all of these different aspects. And only then, only then when all of these kind of different seven items are checked off and I see an opportunity in the chart, that's when I will invest into the company. Now, in summary, check out the links down below for my free stock market course, as well as a link to join the Discord chat. Make sure that you do your own due diligence on every investment you get into. Do not rely on anybody's YouTube videos or their stock signals or anything like that. You need to provide yourself with your own signals based on your own due diligence, and you need to make sure that you have enough information and that you fully understand that information. That is the key there. And if you guys get any value out of this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. I sincerely appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Talk to you soon.